3.4, average memory access time. First, let's look at the, how do we calculate average memory access time? Mainly about cache memory access. All right. Uh, here we use the memory hierarchy. So we consider in CPU in order to load a requested word from main memory using cache to get good average memory access time. So how do we calculate the total average memory access time? That formula. Yeah. All right. CPU reads an instruction or data. Here we do not need to separate instruction or data. We just consider a double word. Okay. The a double word. Yeah. One double word. Okay. All right. First, we need to search that double word in the cache. So we have two cases, cache hit, and in that situation, we need to spend a hit time, okay? Cache miss, in that case, we need to load it from the memory, and we pay a lot of memory penalty, okay? But that happens, happens not all the time, only happens in this miss rate probability. The miss rate gives us the percentage the cache miss happens. So we factor in that part, miss rate part. Then we can get average memory access formula. All right, so let's write the formula. Average memory access based on that two steps. First, hit time step. When we start to look for the requested double word in cache, first we need to pay that hit time first. Hit time. Every word we need to pay that hit time, no matter what. So that's why this term we have to add it to our time yeah then many times we're done because based on the principle of locality most of the time we can get what we want then we're done but there is a small percentage relatively small miss rate miss rate percentage that there is that situation, we need to consider the cash miss. When that happens, we need to pay relatively big number, miss penalty, 100 to one ratio, right? So remember, in a typical situation, that's the one to 100 ratio. We need to pay that relatively big miss penalty but that cash miss happens miss rate percentage of the situation so we need to multiply that miss rate so you can see this formula is quite natural two terms two parts yeah. all right so this is a very important formula although not very difficult but very important. So we can use this formula. We can calculate the cash performance. So this is formula. This formula is for the cash performance. Yeah. Next, let's look at an example, a long example, quite long. Yeah. But we will do it step by step. Look at the question first. We want to compare cache performance for two different caches, yeah. which has the low, which one has the lower miss rate? 
So what two caches? First one, a 16 KB instruction cache with a 16 KB data cache. So separate, split, we call a split cache. We split instruction and the data, two parts. 16 KB here, 16 KB there. Total 32 KB, the first cache. Second one, a 32 KB unified cache. 32 KB unified cache. Yeah. So one cache we can store both instructions and the data items. Yeah. All right. But we need some data related to the miss rate. So the misses per 1000 instructions given in these three cases. The first one, 16 KB instruction cache. 3.82, yeah, 3.82, the unit cycles, clock cycles, okay, yeah, we, 16 KB data cache, 40.9 clock cycles, so you can see this number much bigger comparing with the instruction cache misses, yeah, 32 KB unified cache, 33.3, covering two cases, data, instruction, misses. Yeah. Then, head time, one clock cycle. Miss penalty, 100 clock cycles. All right, another assumption. Assuming 36% of the instructions are data transfer instructions. Yeah. A load or store head takes one extra clock cycle on a unified cache. A unified cache, when you need to load or store data, you need to pay another clock cycle to do it. Okay, yeah. So that's the all the information we have. Now we can do the comparison. To do comparison, basically we just calculate the average memory access time for each cache. Then we compare which one has the smaller average time then that one is better is faster all right so let's do it. the calculation first we draw the diagram try to see you know the percentage of memory accesses for instruction and for data yeah, that part yeah. so let's draw line segment to represent 100 instructions. Why 100 instructions? Reason, because here we are given misses per thousand. Yeah, and here another thing is assuming. Yeah, yeah, not, not misses per thousand. This is used for calculate the miss rate. Yeah, miss rate. All right. All right. Then this part look at this part this part 36 percent of the instructions so that's why we use 100 instructions here matching the given part yeah. more convenient then 36 of them data transfer instructions and at this part we need another data access so we extend to another 36 data accesses. Now we look at all the memory accesses, the percentage part. Percentage for instructions. Yeah. 100 over 136. The bottom total memory access is 136. So 74%. Remaining part percentage of for data access 36 over 136, 26%. So we use these two numbers. Later, we can calculate the contribution shares for instruction cache and the data cache. All right. So we just put those two numbers here. When we need them, we just use them. Next. 
we use this formula. When we use this formula, we just derived the beginning of the video. Yeah, the miss ray part is hardest to calculate because head time given, miss penalty given, but we need to calculate the miss rate. The miss rate original formula is like this misses over memory accesses. But this memory access, the meaning quite different. It is with respect to the current cache. What is the current cache? Here we have three different current caches. Instruction cache, data cache, unified cache. So our formulas for these two, for three different caches will be different. Here, let me give you the formulas for these three different caches. Instruction cache, data cache, and unified cache. For instruction cache, misses over instruction accesses. Data cache misses over data accesses. Unified cache it misses over memory accesses. Okay, all right, so next, let's do the calculation on these three different miss rates. The miss rates, first one, instruction cache. Yeah. 16 KB instruction cache, the formula, misses per thousand instructions over the number of instructions, memory accesses per thousand instructions. But this memory access the same as instruction accesses with respect to instruction cache. So you can see, yeah, so we use 1000 here. Yeah. All right. Second, data cache. This time we need to use the nominator number of data accesses in 1000 instructions. So you multiply 36%. So then you get this number. Third one, unified cache. Now, 1,000 instruction, but you need to include both parts, instruction access, data access. So the data access, you need to add extra 36%. So then you get that number. So with three mystery numbers, then we can calculate average memory access. All right. Average memory access. Here, the three miss rates. So we put here. So we can use them when we need them. Yeah. First, we consider the split cache first. For instruction cache, let's apply the average memory access formula first time. One head time plus the miss rate times the penalty 1.4. Okay. So 1.4 average memory access time for instruction cache. Then data cache, same formula, we just change the miss rate. We get 12.4, much larger. You can see yeah, the average memory access time for the data cache. Then, because for split cache, we need to combine these two different caches. Yeah. The first one, the contribution, 74%. The second one, the contribution, 26%. Okay. Yeah. Now, combine them. 1.4, we need to multiply 74%. 12.4, we need to multiply 26%. So the total, 4.29. That is the overall average memory access time for first cache type. All right, next. All right, so we calculate a unified cache. Also two parts, instruction data, because they are slightly different. So we need to separate a little bit, okay? Instruction part, we'll look at the instruction. Yeah. One hit time, then the miss rate penalty 4.18. 
Why we separate? You will know the hit time part is different. For data part, because the hit time, remember, takes one extra clock cycle. You need to add one extra clock cycle, so the hit time is different. So you have to separate two cases. Yeah. So you get 5.18. Then combine them using 74.26, you know, weights, weighted average, weights. Yeah. So unified cash. 74% times 4.18 plus 26% plus 5.18. So the answer is 4.52. If we compare with a split cache, so this is smaller. So split cache for this question is a better choice, better solution. All right, so we complete. Uh, this relatively big example. If you can understand this example, then the whole type of question, average memory access time, the whole type of question will not be that hard. Yeah. All right, so let me stop here. Yeah.